Hey, hey, hey. So we are back. This week, it is Stardom Dream Tag Festival. Nothing but tag matches. All tag matches up and down the card with some of your favorites that we've talked about, that we've been talking about for weeks. So let's do it. This is Rising Sun Rundown on Women's Wrestling Talk. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. What is happening? Ooh. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Okay. You, we, you got two thirds of your Rising Sun Rundown crew. She will be back soon. She will be back next week. Um, my name is Aisha. That is Lyric. And this is Rising Sun Rundown on Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. <sighs> we are back, y'all. This week, listen, Stardom got their dream tag festival, and it is nothing but tag matches. And uh... it's been fun. I'm, oh my God, I do this every time. Like, I always hit the wrong <laughs> button. But yes, Dream Tag Festival happened. Sorry, I've always discombobulated. I should just be known as the discombobulated crew member. It's fine. You are good. We had a lot of tag matches. And so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, we started off with, well, these aren't in order. Which one was first? Oh, yeah, the ones that was first. Okay, so we had, we started off with Mina and Tam Nakano versus Salary and Nat's Floyd. This was fun. Like, this was just so much fun. I loved this match. And you even have, like, they call back to the little rivalry in between. They started hitting on Mina, Tam, and Matt's boy. Forget that they're not a team for this one. So they start beating on Mina. And I'm like, y'all. It was... <laughs> There was there was a lot going on. Like Natsupoy was getting bullied a little bit. And so um so yeah, but no, this I I really like this one. I, I thought they again, I feel like you know what? Actually I'm gonna say this. All the tag matches I thought were really good. And again, I will say I crack up every week because the intros are half the match. Like the intros are 10 minutes long. I'm like, oh. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, um I had I don't know where this is in order, but I for the first one, I had the gauntlet tag match. So you tell me where that one was with uh, Ami and... and uh, oh, yeah, that was first. That was first. It's not on this graphic that I stole from Start. I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's okay. I just did. I wanted to... Because I really like that one. So I, I just didn't know yes, when you could get... the gauntlet was first. Yes. So we have... What is Bobby saying? My favorite tag team was Julia and Yep Suzuki, Mariah May, and Hanan. We'll get to that one. Yes. Uh, those were two of my faves, too. Yeah, so I, I I enjoyed I really enjoyed this one with Natsupoy, Tom Nakano, Mina, um, Sauri. And they What's did the little dance, they did their dance afterwards, and Mina was like, No, 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 sorry, y'all, I can't do it. Uh, but, um I just watched the version with the translations today of like the um the promos, and so it was so much I feel like it was so much um more linear like that way. And Mina was like, listen. I didn't even mean to do the dance, but when I hear music, my body just moves. It just starts moving. And I said, Mina, please. But it's nice to see um, them team. But Mina's made it clear she's coming for that belt, Tam. She wants it eventually. Obviously, she won't be the next challenger. But hopefully, you know, the challenger after that, Mina's still on her redemption tour. And we love that for her. Next, we had um, my... Sakura, was that the next one? Okay, so the order that I have, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Hold on. This you're probably correct. Okay, so the gauntlet was first, the second one was the one we just talked about. Then I had uh Rena, Rena, Hina, and then my yes. my and Mariah versus my Sakurai. And and then I forgot that the Kyrie segment was somewhere in the middle of all that. That was why I wasn't thinking Kyrie showed up in the middle of this. She basically was like, hey, I love you, Stardom. Ooh, I'm about to go on my final voyage. Um, Hazuki comes out, say, yeah, we want one more match. The the classmates, and then who else comes out? Nanai. 
um, and then Mayu comes out. And so they have a trios match. We're going to get to that later um, coming up. And so then we have Mariah, uh, my Sakurai and Mariah versus Mina and Hina, M Rina and Hina. I like this match. I will say my Sakurai is one of my favorite people in Stardom. Like she found this, this lady gimmick and like, she's been killing it. Like she literally after the match was like, Hello, poor people. Hi, commoners. Thank you for coming out to see me, poor people. Yes, like, you know, I've never been so connected to somebody calling everybody broke, but I love her down. Like, I just love her down. She just has it. <laughs> I was cracking up at that. I said, no, she didn't. Not the commoners, but... Um, I enjoyed that one too. I actually, um, I just kept looking at Rena. Like, I just love her, the black lipstick. I don't know what, what the black lip, it just works for I me. I love it too. I, I, I feel the same way. It just works for me. I'm like, yes, yes. But the match was good. It was overall, it was really good. Mariah and, um, and um, oh, wow. What? Mariah and, my, why? My is, Mariah. I was like, why is my handwriting? Uh, they actually, they won the match. And, um, you know. And also, Mai also asked Mariah to be her partner for Goddess Tag League, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, up next, I think after that was the the Momos mm -hmm. versus um, Mariah May and Hanan. So we had Momo squared versus yes. Mariah May and Hanan. And Mariah May and Hanan, like, I would like to say, obviously, I'm a Mariah May stand on this show, but I love her commitment to the bit. Like, <laughs> She commits, commits. People, she heard, uh, her and Hanan, they heard Dream Tag Festival. They said, bet. We're going to commit all the way. These two switch looks completely. And the thing is, um, Hanan has like the blonde hair. I kept mistaking her for Mariah. So did I. And I was like, what is going on? And I was like, wait a minute. No, that's, yeah. They yeah. really committed. And you know, I'm a sucker for a good thing. I love me a good theme. Mm -hmm. And the girlies, they committed. And I, you know, the match was good, but extra points for actually, like, you know, committing. Hanan should be in Club Venus. Mariah wants her in Club Venus. She said this numerous times that um, she really wants um, Hanan to join Club Venus. So we shall see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My favorite part, though, is... <laughs> Was it, Mo, was it Mo? What, what time? Which time was Momo? Because Momo was not having it from the get go. Momo took that bat and started swinging on everybody. She said, Momo, you're a loser. She started cussing, said, forget everybody. She said, Mariah, you know you weak. She said, I already got my win over you. I don't even want the white belt like that. I just want to embarrass you. I said, The damn. The goon. <laughs> the goon. Odeo Tai are the goons of stardom. They are the goons of stardom. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. They are goons. She was over it. She said, I'm not doing this. She was over it. And so it's just, oh my gosh. I I, I said, Momo, enough. <laughs> they just fought, they just, you know, they done the Mariah and um, Hanan, they don't won by disqualification. Pretty much. Just poor Momo Kogo. She be going through it. My Truly. girl be going through it. And she be putting the team on her back. Um, it was the shortest uh, match. It was, <laughs> it was the shortest one. It was all in what? Eight minutes or so? Eight, nine minutes? Absolutely. Momo said, enough. Forget yeah. all this collaboration. Um, you know, hoorah, hip, hip, hooray. Enough. She said enough. Um, up next, we had um, Nasuko Tora and Hazuki versus Nanai, Takahashi, and um, Raka. Mm -hmm. This match was really good. Um, Hazuki dug back into her dark roots. She used to be a member of Odeo Tai. So, like, her gear was half and half of, like, her old gear, the half white, half, um, half black. Listen, I just want justice for Hazuki. Hazuki's one of the best wrestlers in the world, in my opinion. One of the best on that roster. Why has she been losing most of the five-star Grand Prix? I don't know. But in this show, have matches like these that just proves like she can hoop. 
better than just about everybody. And so I'm going to be honest, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding why y'all don't want to push my girl to the moon. And I've had enough. And I'm not going to lie, if something doesn't change by the end of the year, trust, you will be dealt with. Now you will be dealt with. Okay. Um, well, I, I just, my commentary was Natsuka was like tearing everybody up. So mm-hmm. per use, per use. Absolutely. Right. Another goon, another goon. <laughs> just as we expected. Uh, good match. Um, Hazuki Natsuko ended up winning this one. As expected. Um, Natsuko's looking strong. Mm-hmm. You know, she's heading into that big match with Tam soon for the red belt. So Mm-hmm. You know, hey, Bobby said, <laughs> absolutely. You, know, I'm gonna be honest. Mayu ain't doing nothing with it. The crazy thing is, Mayu won that a title on April 23rd, guys. She's defended it once. Julia won the New Japan Strong Belt on July 5th and has d- defended it three times, I believe. Mayu won that belt before the New Japan Strong Belt was created. And it's not her fault. It's a booking thing because clearly she's not injured. Clearly she's healthy. And honestly, she done been eliminated from the five-star Grand Prix. There's nothing else to do. Like, defend the damn belt. Rossi, what are you cooking? Book it immediately. I'm sorry. I keep going here. I don't know if you can hear the ice cream truck that's right <laughs> outside my window. Like, bruh has been here for like 10 minutes. Sir, ain't nobody want to buy ice cream. Keep it moving. Enough. Uh, Bobby says Julia. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to defend it. Yep, the strong women's champ three times. Yep, three times so far. Absolutely. So, and uh, once in America. Yep. So I guess we'll we'll I don't know. We'll see. Um, do you have anything else to say about? No, that? Not, no more on that match. Um, so next, next one. probably my best, my favorite match on this card. Yep. I knew these crazy people. Yep. Were, Bring it. And that's Julia and Suzu Suzuki versus Yutami Hayashishta and Micah. Listen, the girls came out. I just knew their energy. Whenever Julia comes out in that gear with that her, that table on her shoulder, you know she means business. Suzu's already crazy. She she just, uh, you could tell the bloodthirst. She just, and then now when Yutami and Micah came out with bottles in their hand tequila now i that was very that was very cookout of y'all it was very cookout of you um i don't know if i've ever seen anything that ethnic happen and and stardom before but i i stand like i love this i i, I live for it listen they they're like we're gonna drink we're gonna do this Either way, it don't even matter. It's going to be a good time. The girls were fighting. The girls were pulling out tables, pouring sure. shots, pouring sure. shots mid-match. Exactly, pouring shots. We got chairs, we got tables, we got crowd work, throwing, like, it was just all over the place. I think this match was about 27, 28 minutes mm-hmm. long, somewhere around there. Um it's it was, insane, I think, seeing a women's match get that much time. It was, and that's why I bring that up. I'm really, I'm really interested in the times of these matches because I feel like, this is what I've noticed so far, I feel like whenever Mariah May is in a match, it's shorter. Yes. And then with everybody else, there are degrees of, of you know, the, the length of the match. But this one, it really was intriguing because I was like, oh, 28 minutes? Like, I don't think I've ever seen that in... No. American wrestling so far in the year that I've been watching. But the thing is, I've rarely seen uh, some checking. It went to a time limit draw of 20 minutes. It felt like the entrances. Now I realize, okay, if you count the entrances, it was essentially 27. I think it's because, you know, people, and I'm looking at the card in general, like this one went longer than all the others. People knew that this is the match that everybody wanted to see. Julia and Suzu clearly have a lot of history, um, a lot, a lot of history 
you know, Tommy and Micah make an incredible pair. And also, I think, like, just from star power alone, this was one of, aside from probably the opening match mm -hmm. with, you know, Tam, Mina, Sari, and that boy, I think from star power, this was the biggest one. And also, we also knew that this was going to be the crazy match with all the weapons and all the tables. Julia loved her that pile driver through that table. And Japanese tables are not easy to go through. And they just breaking them like it's just a loose leaf paper. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> Give it to us. Um, I was surprised, but not surprised that this ended in a draw. Um, yeah. I mean, again, surprise, not surprised. I was surprised this ended up in a draw simply because this is supposed to be a one-time only tournament. But clearly that means that this match, we know that there's more juice to this orange. I agree. Like a one-time, this is like the only time y'all are going to do this. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it. And Unless you know, it back in a different capacity, I guess, but... And you know, Julia and Micah, they've just had to wrestle for, it ha it's not out yet, but it's about to be uploaded to Stardom World soon. Like, um, they just wrestled um, in five star. So there's a lot of, you know, I think moving parts here, but also at the same time, Julia and Micah help Suzu out uh, there because prominence pulls up. Risa, Sarah, and her goons, they said, nah, this love fest? She said, Risa, Sarah, she said, now, Suzu, me and you was cool, but now you making friends with her? I thought she was supposed to be out. Now you my op, too. <laughs> and I'm letting y'all know, we coming into Goddess Tag Festival, and we taking all this. This little stardom, we run this now. <sighs> Drama. <laughs> Drama. Ah, love to see it. I uh, really love the relationship between Julia and Suzu. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell like they really care about each other. And also, I think, what's the age difference? They're like nine years. I see. I don't even know. Julia is like 29. And I think Ju Suzu is 20. But obviously, Suzu's been wrestling literally since she was a child. Mm -hmm. So she's been that little sister for Julia, even though she's like going her own way and like stuff like that. So it's very interesting dynamic. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we have one more match. And this is the one that, like, we both agreed before we started that, like, the one we just talked about should have been should have been the main one. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Also, after this match and backstage, Julia asked Suzu to join Donna Del Mondo. So that's... That's going to be a big plot point going forward. It's because Suzu's been independent since she joined Stardom. So is she going to finally join the faction? Who knows? But yeah, continue. Sorry. I said no, no, no. You're, you're fine. You're fine. Um, we, the last one, hold on, hold on. Let me get my, um, see, my computer is freezing. I don't even have my. I got it. <laughs> we had Saki Kashima, the high speed champion. And Amayu Watani, the IWGP Women's Champion, versus uh, Zumi and Starlight Kid teaming up. Mm -hmm. This match was really good. Obviously, Azumi and Starlight Kid have a lot of history as opponents. Seeing them team up was pretty cool. And honestly, I think that they should probably do it a lot going forward. Should it have made a vintage? No. No. But it was a good match. I can't complain. Mm -hmm. You know, but it shouldn't have made a vintage, especially after that dramatic draw right before of just, yeah, it just wasn't the same. I agree. And like I said, I didn't, I did not finish the entire uh, match, but just from what I'd seen, I was like, mm, the one previously was definitely better. I, I often wonder, like, did they not expect, did they not, ex did they expect this one to kind of outshine the other one or as far as like booking goes and, and that's in that capacity or are they underestimating? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure the rationale behind that either, but that's what we got. Mm -hmm. So that was dream tag festival peeps. Mm -hmm. um, nothing has really changed as far as five star grand prix same standings as last week. 
Nasuko Torres leading in the Red Stars. Um, and you have, have Naspoy right on her heels. And then the Blue Stars leading is Yatami Hayashishta, um, followed by Julia with seven. And then there is a six-way tie yep. for third between uh, Azumi, Mirai, Mina, Raya, Momo Watanabe, as well as Sauri. So that's where we currently are with the five-star Grand Prix. But moving on, we have the teams have been announced for the Goddess of Stardom tournament because guess what? We're always at a tournament, guys. We're always at a freaking tournament. Always. What is happening? Is this how it always is? Because I was like, wait, how many tournaments are we going to have? <laughs> Yeah, so this is like a so they have the Cinderella tournament every year. So think of that as almost like your up and coming star tournament. Mm -hmm. So that's for up and coming um, stars. And then y'all have like the five star Grand Prix. So that's a singles tournament. And y'all, that's essentially obviously for like the, the top stars. And then you'll have your tag tournament. Um, and so this is the tag tournament, the Goddess of Star tournament. And then Towards the end of the year, you'll have the Triangle Derby, and that's more so your trios tournament. So those are for the artists of Stardom Belt. So that's essentially how it goes in Stardom. Mm -hmm. Always something happening. We have the two sides, much like the Five Star Grand Prix, Red Stars and Blue Stars. So on the Blue Goddess side, we have Micah and Megan Bain are teaming up. That should be pretty good. The powerhouses together. Mayu Iwatani and Hanan, Sayaida and Hanako, Mirai and Mai Sakurai, Tam Nakano and Natspoi, Na uh, Meltier, as they're called, Azumi and Miyu Amasaki, Momo Watanabe and Roaka, the goons, Ami Sori and Yuna Miz Mizumori. And then for the red side, we have Julia and Tekla, aka La Bella Mafia. We have Suri and Saki, Kashima, Hazuki, and Kaguma, um, Su Suzu Suzuki. I, oh, I said Hazuki and Kaguma. It's my fault. Suzu Suzuki and May Sarah, Mina Shirako and Waka Sukiyama. So it's noticeable who's not on this list. Mm -hmm. um, and that is Mariah May. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wouldn't be surprised if we see her elsewhere, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because if she's not in this Goddess of Stardom tag league, yeah, guys. We have Risa Sarah and Karumi, prominence who pulled up and told y'all they're taking over. Yup, yup. Um, Nasuko Tora and Starlight Kid, um, some more goons. And we have Yutami Hayashishta and Lady C. So these are the teams for Goddess of Stardom tag league. If I had to go ahead and put my money on anybody, um, favorite teams. I'm going with Micah and Megan Bain. I think that they have the power to do something really good. On that red goddess side, I'm very interested in Suzu Suzuki and May Sarah. I've been impressed with them as a team. I'm also interested to see what Mina and Waka do as a team, too. Um, I think Waka can really improve as a wrestler by working with Mina during this tournament. So I think it's going to be a great learning experience for her and so okay that's where we are all right um let's see we got some comments let's see i'd like to see starlight kid or azumi wrestle against mayu for iwgp women's championship at this point mayu could wrestle a broom i just need her to wrestle somebody okay bosa says five star grand prix will definitely go to the last match i wouldn't be surprised if they need sudden death matches in each group I wouldn't be surprised either. Some, and you know what? Just because, like in tournaments this year, that's already been happening. Like that's what happened in you know pro wrestling Noah during the N one. So, you know, I think it's a that's a real possibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby says uh, he wishes Mariah May was announced for this. Yep, still rumor she's going to AEW. So we'll yeah. see if that is the case. Uh, is this a case where one winner will go for the red belts and the winners? go for the blue belts or is this a tag version of the five star tag version of the five star yeah it just seems like um yep and it's a yep maybe mariah's going to do dates in america we'll see we'll keep an eye on that i just saw i don't know i, I guess maybe i need to google this but someone responded to our tweet um we tweet out that we're going live that it is tommy's birthday today oh! um so 
happy birthday if that is the case. I wanted to Google it real quick, um, but a uh, preemptive happy birthday. We'll co- you know, if that's not the truth, we'll retract it. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I think for me, again, this is, is still all very new. From what I've seen, uh, Megan, we, we didn't talk much about the gauntlet tag match that happened. Yeah. But uh, Megan and I believe she was with, who was she with? She was with my, my Sarah. She with May Sarah, yeah. May Sarah, thank you. Um, and they ended up winning it, but I, I thought they really uh, did a really good job. So like whatever Megan is doing, hey, get it. Uh, on the red side, I don't know. I'm a fan of Julia. We'll see. But also Natsuko is, listen, it's tearing up folks. <laughs> That's too cool with Starlight Kid. Let, let's see. Let's see where let's see where they go. So I'm I'm here for it. I also think it's just gonna be a lot of fun. Like the 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 tournaments, stardom tournaments just, you know, they love their tournaments, but you know, the matches typically deliver. And so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I just checked. This is Yutami's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, she turned 25 today. So we're 25 club. 25. Listen. Um, Boza says, I think Mayu and Hanan from Group A will meet Julia and Thekla out of Group B. You know what? As I think, as um, I think for me, I'm I'm finding tournaments tedious. But as tedious as I think they are, it gives these women to they are they're wrestling oh so much. So that is always a plus. You know what I mean? So, um, and I also think it's like there you just have to like readjust your mind because like the schedule is completely different from how we're used to seeing it in american television so like for example like new well we'll get to that later but like you know new japan just went on a hiatus for like two weeks and now they're back and there's more stuff and they're preparing for the next tournaments because we have junior tag league coming up and we have world tag league coming up so this is typically how japanese wrestling you know just operates you know on more of a tour by tour format rather than you know the weekly television episodic television that we're used to and so definitely like it's just an adjusting your mind uh and i'm still getting used to it too because i'm gonna be honest like you know, most tournaments in American wrestling, like they're either super predictable or they're just like not a full scale tournament like this with a bracket. And so it's a, it's a learning curve. It's definitely a learning curve. But I've just been, I have been enjoying like seeing proper tournaments and feeling like, you know, a sense of, oh, I genuinely don't know who's going to win this. Because I don't think that really happens in America where a tournament is announced and, like, we don't know exactly who's going to be in the finals and who's probably going to win. So it has been cool to finally feel surprised. Yeah, for sure. I think, like you said, um, yep, giving giving women reps in the ring, and I can't complain about that at all. I would love to see, I would love to see one of the companies do here do a full-blown tournament and see what that would look like, like an actual tournament and not just like a f- couple of weeks and then we know what's going to happen. I and know. honestly, I think that where we are, at least on like the AEW side of just like, I think we're at a point where we can see a couple different companies possibly get together and do something. Like, you know, like the way that New Japan invites, t- you know, other people from like, you know, the places in the, their tournaments sometimes, like if you're exceptional, like I think AEW's at that point, like you throw New Japan, Ring of Honor and new, and like, you know, AEW together, like there's no reason why you can't do like a, a women's tournament or a tag tournament or something like, you know, like there's so many options now, especially with collaboration. Like, why are we not doing, I think especially for me personally, I feel like for that IWGP belt, when they said it was supposed to be defended around the world, like, you know, this company and the perfect opportunity to like set it up like they did for like, you know, the new Japan strong tournament, pull women from all these different companies. Like, you know, you got AEW, you got impact, you got CMLL, you got stardom, you got all these places. Let's do like a full fledged tournament. Like, you know, like a full fledged worldwide tournament. Think about if the finals were somewhere like wrestle dream or something like y'all not thinking. Speaking of Wrestle Dream, uh, Bosa says with AEW Wrestle Dream in about a couple weeks, do we think Mayu and Julia defend? So far, the, uh, only the IWGP champ on the card is Zack Sabre Jr. and uh, versus Brian Danielson. So I do not think because one, it is this. Even though New Japan talent will be on the show, this is not a joint show, and um, between AEW and New Japan, and also 
there are like book shows that day. There's a stardom show and then there's a New Japan show also on that same day. And um, I believe that just about everybody is booked. So Zack Sabre Jr. was already not um, booked for that New Japan show. And who else is in book? I think Will Ospreay also isn't booked for that show. Mm -hmm. um, so anything can happen, obviously, but especially as we um, get in like tournament matchups and stuff like that, um, and we're getting to the nitty gritty on the five star, I think it just depends on who makes it to the end of the five star. So we don't know like who can theoretically even come over. Um, okay. Obviously we have an idea of like who's going to make it to the finals, but these next two weeks will be very, very telling, I think, of who's actually has a chance to take it home. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else to add? Should we go right into the commercial? Oh, yeah. Um, so um, last thing on stardom, we have um, the card is mostly finalized for the Nag Nagoya Golden Fight. Um Confirmed, we have Tam Nakano versus Nasuko Tora for the World of Stardom Championship. We have Yatami Hayashishta and Azumi of Queen's Quest challenging for the Goddess of Stardom Tag Championships versus Natspoi and Saori Ano. We have Mirai versus Momo Watanabe for the um, Wonder of Stardom Championship that Momo don't even want. She's just trying to raise hell. Um, we oh, also announced... We have a artist of stardom championship match. My Sakurai, Julia, and Tekla versus Suzu Suzuki, Micah, and Megan Bain. We have Terry's last match for her uh, next voyage. Um, a trios match with her um, and her beloved former tag team partner, Nanai Takahashi, as well as the, her fellow daughter of stardom, Mayu Iwatani, versus um, the classmates they call themselves, um, Hazuki, Saida, and who's that, Hanako? Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a high speed championship match. May Sarah finally getting her shot against Saki Kashima. And they haven't made a graphic yet. But we still have that UWF rules match to look forward to between Mina Shirakawa and Suri. So that's currently what we're looking towards. Next star, big stardom show, Nagoya Golden Knight. Okay. We got a lot. Absolutely. I think it's time for a commercial. Let's do it. Here we go. Hey, peeps. TK Trinidad here, boss lady of Women's Wrestling Talk. And I want to say thank you so much for watching because you've got millions of options. Plus, you don't have to worry about sharing your password to check us out. But while you're here, hopefully you know we have so many more shows to watch. Like Turnbuckle Glam, Raw Post Show, WOW Post Show, AEW Dynamite Post Show, Women's Wrestling Army Post Show, NXT Post Show, Impact Wrestling Post Show, AEW Rampage and SmackDown Live Post Show, On The Scroll, ROH Post Show, WWT Live, plus all of our interviews with the hottest women's wrestlers in the game. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our website at www.talkpod.com and follow us on all social media platforms at www.talkpod and make sure to spread the word. That means send this to the group chat. Yes, even the person with the green bubble. Thanks again so much for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Ciao for now. Thank you to our TK, um, all the shows. Check them out. You know what to do. Um, Bobby said all things are happening in wrestling. Absolutely. All the things. Yep. Um, just really quick. Bosa says that six woman tag, if it's Kyrie, uh, if, I, if it's Kyrie's last match, that's a good way for Kyrie to go out before she comes back to WWE. Rumor has it the success of EO Sky played into her wanting to return. Yep. Um, I think it's a great way for her to go out as well. Um, I think she'll be missed in the stardom, but she worked pretty much a part time or like schedule since she came back so it's not like she's like leaving a like a major hole you know like i think i think it's honestly just really awesome of her 
to go back in the first place. Like, I think a lot of times, like, you know, wrestlers move on with their careers, go to bigger, better things. And a lot of times they don't return back to their roots. And so the fact that she came back to start where it all started at all and, you know, really nurtured those relationships, I think is just, especially with the star power she has, I think it's just really awesome. Like she did, a, she's done a lot of good. And so I think it's really cool. Uh, moving on this weekend in wrestling, we have a big, 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 big Noah show. Um, actually, no, I'm lying. The show itself, I'm not going to lie, isn't that big. But the main event is huge, massive. Naomichi Marafuji is celebrating 25 years as a professional wrestler. Wow. And if you don't know who Marafuji is, guess what? He's probably your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler. Him and Kenta are known as some of the most copied from stolen from wrestlers of this generation they really really i would say redefined like the, the basis for modern u.s indie wrestling got all of their plot points from these guys specifically marifuji and so this and one of the people who he inspired most well, osprey and that's why he chose him to be his 25th anniversary opponent which was announced and the, the gauntlet was laid down at the Forbidden Door Media Scrum. Um, of Will Osprey, you know, said that he wanted to be um, Mayor Fuji's challenger, and Mayor Fuji accepted. This is going to be a really great show, a really great main event. And I also, I on my Twitter have been posting a Mayor Fuji match every day this week um, in anticipation for this and for our people who might want to know like what it, all the hype is about. Because mm -hmm. trust me, he's definitely worth the hype. So keep your eyes on pro wrestling Noah this weekend on Sunday. Um, it'll be on Russell universe, which is continues to be the biggest bang for your buck in professional wrestling. You get four different promotions for like $6 a month. Can't really beat that. Very nice. If you are like me, I, you know, I, I only know him a little bit, a little tiny bit. If you like me, like, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's watch what the uh, lyric is posting. I will yes. and, and watch some some of the matches because um, I think I've seen like maybe one. So it'd be nice to. Absolutely. And I've been trying to like post like a range of stuff from his career. So stuff from like the early days, stuff from like more recently, because I will say the, what I love about Mayor Fuji is that he's just a wrestler who has evolved with the times. And so like he's just going to continue to make himself captivating. Can he do all the stuff that he was doing at 20? No, but he knows how to evolve his style to still be, in my opinion, one of the best wrestlers in the world. And he's just really cool. And he has a cool, really great look. And I think that also Marifuji has one of the best entrance themes of all time. And it has no words. So one of the best. Um, and also Will Ospreay is just super excited to face him. Like he said numerous times, like that's one of his all time, like, the person who made him want to be a wrestler. And so this should be a very, very special match. Um, moving on. New Japan is back. Thank God. Okay. You said they took two weeks off. Did they? Cause like, I can't, they, took, they took, they took two weeks off and it. it like, they, oh, hell. Cause I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe my feeds on the TL, on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm like, did y'all really take a break? Was there a break? Well, they, just, they just came back this week. They just came back last week. Okay. So they've been doing house shows. So mm -hmm. they've been back on the house show circuit. And also just because like New Japan has been on a break doesn't mean that the wrestlers have been on a break. So a lot of people, like especially the wrestlers in America, you've seen a lot of them in Impact recently. So like a lot of them have been doing Impact dates um, who like um, obviously Leo Rush, Kevin Knight, Kushida, um, so, so a lot of them have been doing that. And then maybe that's um, what it is. Obviously, you'll see like a lot of crossover with um Ring of Honor. There's been some crossover with Pro Wrestling Noah, um, people doing Noah dates, there's been people doing um all Japan dates, there's been people doing um AEW. So, like just because New Japan has been on a break doesn't mean the talent has been on a break. So <laughs> that's probably what especially if like if you watch on the tl it probably is like now where did everybody go now nobody told me nothing uh <laughs> no it's like i'm seeing everybody everywhere so i'm like what break <laughs> exactly and maybe that's just what it was yeah but people have been everywhere you know so that's probably it 
Um, we're heading towards Big Show, Destruction, and Kobe. Um, and so we have a big card um, starting. These matches are not in order, but who cares? Um, we have a big never open weight um, six man uh, show, um, match. Um, Okada, Tanahashi, and Tomohiro Ishii just announced that the Motor City Machine Guns are coming over to Japan and they're bringing Josh Alexander with them to challenge for the never six man um, open weight titles. I think this is going to be a blast. Um, this should be a very fun match. I have been begging, screaming, pleading, crying for a Shingo Takagi singles match. And you know, I got it, but at what cost? Um, it's versus Great Okan. I mean, no problems with that man, uh, but this isn't what I wanted. Um, Listen, the, I think every time you talk about you have beef with somebody, I because I'm I'm <laughs> fascinated. Like, I cannot wait to ask you why you got beef with all these folks, because I... <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have beef with Great Okan, but when I said I wanted Shingo Takagi singles matches again, you are not who I asked for. Okay. <sighs> Moving on. Okay. For the King of Pro Wrestling provisional title, we have Tai Chi versus Sho, a House of Torture member, so I hope he loses. Next caller, we have Leo Rush is teaming back up with Yo. For those of you who remember, that's how Leo Rush really, I feel, got his groove back last year in Junior Tag League. He started teaming up with Yo. They ended up going to the finals, actually ended up winning the entire thing, and they challenged for the Junior Heavyweight Belt at Wrestle Kingdom. Ended up losing, but I think that really started that monster run that Leo Rush has been on, I feel, all year. They will be taking on Hiromu Takahashi and Bushi. Um, obviously, this is just a precursor for the big match that is coming up in the future. With um, it's going to be a three-way for the IWGP Junior Weight Heavy Junior Heavyweight Championship, which will be Leo Rush versus the reigning champion Hiromu Takahashi versus Speedball Mike Bailey, which is going to be a banger. Mm -hmm. I'm just so excited. Every combination of those three in matches this year has turned to gold, whether it's Speedball versus Leo Rush or Hiromu versus Speedball, Hiromu versus Leo Rush, both times, like, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, we have Kevin Knight and Tiger Mask teaming up versus Clark Con Connors and Dan Drilla Maloney from the Bullet Club War Dogs. Of course, this is leading into there's a big title match. They're eventually going to wrestle um, Kevin Knight with his usual partner, um, Kushida. The Intergalactic Jet Setters will eventually take on Clark Connors and Drilla. And we have for the IWGP Heavyweight Championships, we have Yoshihashi and... Um, Hiroki Goto, Bishamon versus TMDK, Mikey Nichols, and Shane Hayes. I hope that the titles change hands here. And the reason why is like, don't get me wrong, Bishamon has been great champions, but honestly, like, Bishamon should never have had the belts in the first place. We all know what happened. Aussie Open had won the heavyweight belts, but then Mark Davis gets injured, so they had to vacate the titles. And so, like, they kind of like put the belts back on Bish Bishamon in like a transitional way, just because like, you know, like the original plan of having them on Aussie open fell through because of the injury. Wait a minute. So they didn't even, so there wasn't even, they, they just dropped them and then just gave them back to. So no, there, there was a match, sure. but it was Bishamon versus house of torture. And you, if you want to keep me as a fan, they knew not to put them on house of torture. Oh. Um, and so, um, that's what happened, and so Bishamon were who Aussie Open won the titles from to start with at Sakura Genesis. So it's just like I feel like the Bishamon story arc had already completed, and then like you know, putting them back on them has just been more of an attrigit, you know, just more of a transitional manner. Um, so and also TMDK has been on fire this year. Mikey Nichols and Shane Hayes both impressed during the G1. I think TMDK as a whole has just been killing it with Zach Saber Jr. as the front man, Robbie Eagles is awesome, Kosei Fujita is awesome. I'm you know, I'm ready. Shrap the boys up, you know. I'm I'm here for I want Hayes and Nichols to take those titles. Um, we have wow, 
I have one of these matches wrong. Oh. Because I was like, Okada can't wrestle twice. What am I looking at? One of these is a road two match. And it's not this one. This I, I think this is the road two match. So skip what I'm about to say. But that match is probably going to happen at a house show. Um, that that Ishii Okada versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Bad Dude Tito match. I shouldn't have put that one there. My fault. We had Naito and Jeff Cobb. Okay, so this match is really interesting because essentially Jeff Cobb has said, Naito, because I beat you in the G1, I want to challenge you for your contract that entitles you to that main event spot at Wrestle Kingdom um, that, since you won the G1. Naito said, I'm fine with wrestling you, but I owe you nothing. Even if you win the match, you ain't getting shit from me. Like, I'm not giving you this contract. Like, you're not going to scam me. He said, you can believe whatever you want. We can wrestle every day, all day, all night until we blue in the face. You ain't getting this contract, bucko. So okay. there's that. Whoop. Should be a great match. We have a six-person tag. We have Sonata, Doki, and Taka Mishinoku versus House of Torture Chair. I don't know much about House of Torture, but obviously you hate them. We are in hell. Ooh. In hell, she says. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Can't beat that. Um, we have a 10 per, 10 man tag. We have El Phantasmo has finally joined, rejoined his old friends. He has made amends for all of the bad things that he has done in when he was a member of Bullet Club. So he's realigned himself with Tamatanga and um Tangaloa and Hikaleo and Jado. Um, he is now a member of Gorillas of Destiny versus the current. Um, Bullet Club, the people that kicked him out. So um, it is David Finley, Chase Owens, um, Alex Coughlin, Gabe Kidd, and Gato. So, you know, should be fun. Should be fun. And of course, we have our main event. We have Big Suge, the Gene Blast, um, Yoda Suji versus Will Ospreay for the IWGP UK Heavyweight Championship. This is going to be good. I will say, in these house shows leading up to this, uh, Yoda Suji been beating Will Ospreay ass. He has pinned him, you know, been... <laughs> Fight back, you Billy Goat. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. He's been getting knocked around. Well, I guess we will We will see. Um... Yeah, talk of Mishinoku, that's crazy, ain't it? Like, nah, he still wrestled. Like, you got whole moves named after you, and you still like out here, like live, <laughs> eating live, like crazy. B team oh. Bullet Club. Okay, here's the thing. Ooh. I can say whatever y'all want about this Bullet Club, but they are the number one merch movers for New Japan right now. That Bullet Club War, War Dog T-shirt. Listen, you might not love it, but somebody do. How recent is their the merch thing? How like how re have they been? Has the has the merch been over? I would say since the G1. Since the G1. Now, who the interesting thing when it comes to Bullet Club is who do you attribute the popularity to? Because that's what I was about to say. I was like, do we have some residual with the with the new iteration of the Bullet Club? Is that spilling well, over? No, it's not so it's not the Bullet Club t-shirt that's the number one. Um, it's the Bullet Club War Dogs t-shirt, which is specific to this iteration. So that is the number one merch mover right now in New Japan. So I do believe that they're moving. However, I do believe a lot of that popularity comes from Gabe Kidd over the G1 of because I think that he just stood out. He made himself a mega star. He was picking fights with everybody. Like, you know, he was essentially like just he 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 just made himself a spectacle. I think every time. I'm not sure if it's because of you know David Finley. I do think that heading out of the G1, I feel like the spotlight has been more so on the War Dogs just because they've been very interesting. Dan Maloney is interesting. Clark Connors is interesting. Um, Alex Coughlin is Alex Coughlin. Um, Gabe Kidd is very interesting, and a lot of people have been pushing for him. They say he should be the new leader. So it depends on who do you attribute the success to. Now, 
Chase Owens just been Chase Owens. Like he's nobody coming to see you, Otis. But he's also not a war dog. He's OG Bullet Club. Like since like he been there so long. Like he been there forever. The merch sells itself. I think the original Bullet Club shirt sells itself. Like that's an iconic design. It was in Hot Topic. Even if people like weren't into wrestling, like those shirts were in Hot Topic. Like I remember seeing the Bullet Club shirts from back in the day in Hot Topic. But these um these shirts, like these Bullet Club War Dog shirts, these are specific for right now. And so the numbers don't lie. Somebody buying it. A lot of somebody's buying it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's go back real quick. Bosa says, uh, New Japan fans are in for a treat with Speedball. I agree. I uh, think he's okay. great. Plus, TM TMDK already has a TV title with Zach. They would slowly take over New Japan with this win. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and also, the UK championship needs to be the United States heavyweight championship soon. I don't think so. <laughs> My thing is also, like, we have to think about, like, how New Japan is set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, when the U.S. Heavyweight Championship was originally created, it was created for Kenny Omega because he was that damn popular. And he was really just, he's a huge reason, him and the Bullet Club and the Elite from that time are a huge reason why the New Japan U.S. expansion happened and was originally successful. And But you have to think, now... New Japan with this full American subsidiary, um, subsidiary, subsidiary, whatever the subsidiary. Fuck. Yeah, that. Yeah. Um, company. It is now created its whole its own line of belts completely. So you have the New Japan Strong, open weight, women's, and tag championship. So you have like literally a whole line of belts that are supposed to be strictly for America. Yes. So, like, my, my thing is, like, how do you differentiate which one technically overranks the U.S. heavyweight championship or this New Japan, you know, strong open weight? I believe that this championship should be molded back into what it originally was, the Intercontinental Championship. Obviously, they unified the belts about, what was that, 2018, 2019, when Kota Ibushi held the IWGP Heavyweight Championship as well as the Intercontinental Belt. But the Intercontinental Belt in, the, in New Japan used to be a big deal. It main evented pay-per-views. It was seen as basically almost on, if not you know, similarly leveled as the actual Heavyweight Championship. And so that's what I feel like this, I, this U.S. Championship belt represents. It's a belt that met main events pay-per-views, obviously, it's known to have some of the best matches of all time. Think of Omega Osprey. I think this is just a great opportunity. Like, don't get me wrong, having it as the UK Heavyweight Championship does make a lot of sense. I will say, New Japan is wildly popular in the UK, um, but they only do like one show there a year. So I don't think like there's any benefit unless they plan on really starting to establish more roots in that market of keeping it as the US, the UK Championship. So if you ask me, it's time to turn it back into that Intercontinental Championship. Well, Bosa agrees. Um, he says he's surprised that they, uh, they didn't bring back the Intercontinental Championship for New Japan Pro. It gave us great matches. Absolutely. He's with you. So, Absolutely. Uh, what else you got? That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. Yeah, that is it. That's a that's a lot. Lyric always bringing it to us every single week. I'm grateful. Look, I learn something all the time. Learning. How the, I'm so serious, girl. Look. I, listen, I was like, oh my gosh. I look back whenever I make mistakes and stuff. I'm like, oh my God. It's just, it's it literally is so much stuff. And I'm trying to like always like keep abreast of it. Listen, don't feel bad for being behind on New Japan. Like I feel, I still have a few matches to catch up on. Like, and also I've been trying to like do all Japan too. And like, it's a lot. Learning. It's a lot. It's so much Japanese wrestling happening. So much just wrestling in general happening. Mm -hmm. Like it's so it's so much, you know. Okay. I say enjoy all wrestling, but nah, pick the stuff that you like and just just hold on to it, y'all. 
I agree. Like I say all the time, not just on this show, but on Collision as well. Like there's so much wrestling. Like I don't know how y'all be watching and y'all, I mean all the other hosts, like y'all are great. Y'all be watching. I'm like, how are y'all watching all of this stuff? Like I'm trying to keep track of like, who Lord. So um, Bobby says, looking forward to watching Stephanie Vaquer wrestling on New Japan Pro Strong Fighting Spirit unleashed on October 28th. You know what? I'm really glad that you said that because She's in a tag match. And Julia's supposed to be on that car. I just thought that that was an easy layup. You know, those two. But she's not. So I'm assuming, uh, are they going to run a Mercedes match or something? Just because I thought that that was just an easy layup. If you definitely, you know, they've already announced that both Stephanie and Julia are going to be there. Like, you know, so, but Stephanie's in a tag match. So, you know, I'm. I'm interested. I'm interested to see what's happening here. We will see. Um, before we head out, do you have anything to say about PWI 500? Or should we just... I do have something to say. And like this is what I have to say. I'm not going to get into the rankings. Y'all do what y'all want, even though, let's just be real. That number one was laughable. <sighs> laughable. And when I say laughable, I mean laughable. Because y'all... Seth there, Rollins, you know, there, hey. There is no Seth Rollins match that could even land in the top 20 matches of this year. At least what Roman has on his side, even though his matches are all the same, at least he has spectacle on his side. Like, Seth, they don't let you, you they don't let you main event nothing. They don't let you do nothing. They gave you a belt to make you stop crying on the internet. Okay. Oh, right. and I say this as like somebody who really, really do. I'm a shield stand for through it. Like, so you don't even believe this. Like, come on. Like, I don't even think you believe. It. Like, I saw that this morning. I said, now, I know we are. I know y'all trying to get some of that ad revenue share money from 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 Elon, but this is crazy. This is this is crazy. I, um, uh, yes, he was. I, is it popularity? No, it, because I, if we go on our popularity, how was Cody at 10? I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing. It's like Seth Rollins, like, I'm not even saying Seth Rollins has done nothing remarkable this year. Like, when I say, and I mean remarkable. I think that he's solid. I think that he's consistent. I think that he's always there for WWE when other people flake. I think that he is extremely consistent, but he's done nothing remarkable this year. Nothing that's made me say, wow, like he's him. I've never, he hasn't, like he has great outfits, great gowns, beautiful gowns. Like, oh my gosh, fashion killer. Like, He's done the things. Except for the boots. If Except for the, the, boots, tired, let the boots go. Let them boots go. Let the boots go. For, for everybody, not just him, everybody. Yeah, let the boots go. Orange Cassidy was a seven. Yes. Oh, Orange Cassidy. Was there. I think MJF was also there. MJF was there. I can tell that y'all just threw that list. Respectfully. From what I saw, I think they just threw a whole bunch of names together based off of like, huh, what's going to get people talking? And you succeeded. Like, even like, oh yeah, let's get all the shield. Moxley is at three. Respectfully, Mox is so far ahead of his shield compatriots. It's not even funny to really like put him in the same category. Mox challenges himself daily in the ring, outside of it. And he doesn't have to. This man does amateur grappling tournaments. He does indies. He's doing producing. He's doing all of these different things. He's helping other people on the roster. His dedication and love for pro wrestling is just unmatched. He's continuing. He's been in Japan this year. He's just, John Matsu's on just such a different level. Like, this was just laughable. Truly, Bobby, he was ranked number three. He was ranked number three behind Roman and Seth. Yeah, I said they just wanted to be like, oh yeah, the shield at the top three. Like, y'all, it's okay. Get your clicks by any means necessary. This is my problem. Number one, and they did admit that this was an omission, but I think that this is a really glaring omission for like what's supposed to be the leading list, quote unquote, for our industry. Why Tetsuya Naito wasn't on the list at all? 
That's the G1 Climax winner from this year, not featured on the list at all. That's a glaring omission. And on top of that, you have several members, several, several members of Japanese wrestlers being listed from the wrong promotion. I saw Kino, who has put pro wrestling Noah on his back this year, has been absolutely entertaining, wrestling all over the world. He has been wrestling, really putting pro wrestling Noah on his back. Why is he listed as a member of All Japan Pro Wrestling? A whole different organization. Shun Skywalker, a standout wrestler from Dragon Gate Wrestling. Why is he mentioned as a wrestler from DDT? Even Yuji Nagata, who I know has wrestled in All Japan Pro Wrestling this year. He is a New Japan Pro Wrestling talent. You have Shatoshi Kojima, who is a New Japan Pro Wrestling cha- t- uh, talent, like, relisted as just, like, a general, you know, wrestler. Like, it's stuff like that of just, like, American media has a long way to go. Like I said, the international, the borders between our worlds are dissolving, which means that Japanese wrestling and non-Western wrestling is becoming more popular and becoming more mainstream. As it becomes more mainstream, a lot of these quote unquote mainstream lists are just throwing people's names on lists because they feel like they have to have check a quota Mm -hmm. rather than actually doing the work. And that's what frustrates me because it's just like it's disrespectful. Like those are that is the equivalent of if they wrote down that Roman Reigns was an impact or if they wrote down that, you know, John Moxley is still wrestling for WWE like that. Those are that's the level of omissions that we, those are the level of the mistakes that happen. Yep. Sounds so like, cool. Yep. There you go. Uh, Danielson was uh, ranked at number 16. I'm looking at the list right now. Uh, JD says Mox isn't dedicated to wrestling so much as he just likes to go to places that will cause him to bleed. JD, you know what? You are not entirely wrong. Not completely wrong, but you know, he dedicated to wrestling Right. Uh, Nikki says, shout out to all my boys that made it, Trey, Kevin, Kevin Nightmare, Myron Reed. Love y'all. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Uh, Masha Slamovich was, I think, the only woman within like the top. Masha. Now, shout out to Masha Slamovich. I mean, yes, that was in an incredible ranking. Yes. No like, shame. Absolutely like, not. No shame whatsoever. Like that was an incredible ranking for Masha. I think she was what ranked at what 15? I want to say she was, yep, right, um, right, uh, behind right above Danielson. Danielson, yep, like Masha's been kicking ass, man. Like, she's been all over the world. Um, she's been doing it, and honestly, she has been doing it in mostly a lot of inter- gender ma- matchups. Like, she's been doing it with the best. She was one of the only women who commit, um who competed in the um, PWG Battle of Los Angeles earlier this year. Um, so shout out to Masha. That yeah. was an incredible ranking. Um, this year they are they have expanded the women's 150 to a women's 250, I believe. And the, that list has not been released yet as of right now. That's going to be released in its own issue. Um, so like they, they do them separately. Um, so... Nikki said Ali catch Ali catch made the list at 135. Yeah. Scrolling through. Um just scrolling through. I see Trish Adora at 82. Shout out to Trish Adora. Billy Shout Stark. out to Trish. Billy Starks at 96. Well deserved. Um, who else do I see in here that it's we it's essentially most of the women who like have mm-hmm. I think pr- done a lot of intergender wrestling this year who can make the men's list. Um, and so I think that that was really great. Now, I will say, if we're doing that, would I have put Masha as the top one as far as intergender wrestling this year? I would have probably put Trish higher. Trish has done a lot. Like, I think about the match she had with Calvin Tankman earlier this year for the culture, and like, even Billy Starks has run worked the like I would say the most rigorous schedule, indie schedule, maybe this year. Mm-hmm. And so if we were doing it off based off that, I would have put Billy Starks higher. But you know, hey, like shout out to Masha. Like she's done a lot in addition to being signed to Impact and having like, you know, like essentially a full time. So truly I see Jody Thread at 215. I see yeah. I'm, I'm scrolling through real fast if I miss anybody. I see 
Sawyer Wreck. Shout out to Sawyer Wreck at 247. Sawyer's been killing it. Been killing and, not just it. In, and not just in the U.S. She's been doing some great stuff in Japan, too. So shout out to Sawyer Wreck. Yep. Shout out to Kenzie at 250. But yeah, there y'all go check out the full full list. But I'm just pointing out, you know, some of some of the women that somebody said, do you think Suri retains number one? No. Um Suri has had a great year, but Suri has had a slow year. You know, she just like everything she does, she's always has good matches, but like this has been a pretty slow year for Suri. Like, you know, she hasn't really held a championship. She hasn't had any like, you know, mega feuds or anything like that. And so I don't expect her to retain number one. She should always be, you know, top billing just because, like I said, like on any given day, she pound for pound is probably the best women's wrestler in the world based off skill alone. But as far as accomplishing a lot, this wasn't really a serious year, especially when you think like she dropped the world of stardom championship on December 29th. And so she hasn't really held gold or she's honestly lacked a lot of direction since. So yeah, she's going to be in it, but I don't think we see her top five. I, I, I honestly don't see her in top 10 this year. Okay, so before we wrap it up, just real quick, uh, Nikki says Rhea might get one, no lie. Do you think we'll see Steph Delander? And I think we'll see Steph. Yeah, she'll she'll be in there. She'll be in there. Um, Jamie Hader should be top ten for real, no lie. So yeah, yeah. So y'all go check out the full list. We'll wait for the the two fifty um, for the women's. But congrats! Uh, I think I saw Sunny Kiss. Uh, going through the list real quick as well. Shout out to to all of them. And and yeah, I think, Lyric, everything you said is correct, that if you are going to be putting these Japanese wrestlers or these wrestlers from Japanese promotions, get them right, be respectful. Um, yeah, but I think that is it. Um, Lyric, tell the folks where we can find you on the interwebs. You can find me at Lyric Wrestling on Twitters and Instagrams. Subscribe to my YouTube at Lyric Swinton. Um, I'm on a podcast hiatus for the next couple weeks, but I'll be back before Wrestle Dream. Oh, Wrestle Dream. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. They booking this car for me, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. AEW lately since all out this day hit like crack. Do you hear me? Like they we back on the good foot. Hangman versus Swerve injected in my veins. You know what? I'm here for. I'm really here for Brian for for Brian Danielson and Zack Saber Jr. Like oh, I just, truly. I've been waiting on them at the door. I've been waiting on them at the door since the first Forbidden Door when it was supposed to happen. Okay. <sighs> It's on like Donkey Kong. Let's go. Um, Y'all can find me on twi Twitter at Aisha Watches. I have not been as active because it's always a dumpster fire and I cannot handle it. Like everybody gets on my nerves. So I have not been tweeting that much. But um, yeah, I've been in my own little world. But you can find me here on Thursdays, also on Sundays for Collision and Rampage, along with the Collision crew, Mika and Al. Um, and yeah, that is that. Y'all, it is Al's birthday on Saturday, so show her some love when she posts. It'll be her birthday. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you all so much for joining us. And um, I don't know, that that is it. This is Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. We will see y'all next week. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. <laughs>